Hello gang. Hello friends. Hello gang friends. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this video finds you well. Are you well? I hope you're well. If you're new, hello. My name is Joe, and I do nail stuff. She does stuff with nail stuff. All the stuff she does with nails is done with nail stuff and stuff for nails. Guess what? Madame Glam have a lamp. I know, it's very exciting. Um, and whilst I do, I did say in my Nails 101 video that I don't believe you need the same brand lamp as the brand polish you're using, so you don't need to have 75 different lamps for all your different brands. But if you are sticking to a brand or if you're just in the market for one then it's worth getting their lamp plus it means everything matches which is nice so we're going to have a look at the lamp this is the base it is a removable base which is great for um when you're doing feet so instead of someone trying to slide their foot in this lamp then you can just put the lamp over their foot it's got a bajillion um lights in it yes yeah, so that magnetizes on that base and then you take the blue stuff off which is very satisfying and then because it's mirrored it helps distribute the light everywhere to get a really good cure and then we have a 90 second a 60 second a 30 second and a 10 second cure and i think it also um is oh and it has a little handle how nice is that especially if you're mobile i find out now that it's an american plug so I can't plug it in because it's different to what I have. Um, but I'll, I'll buy myself a converter somehow and I'll show you when I can plug it in. So yeah, it's got billions of lights, billions. I think there's, I don't know, it does tell you on the box how many. We'll have a look. Um, and that will mean that you are getting a cure from every angle and then the mirror just makes it even more evenly distributed. It's a very nice looking lamp. It's a bit sexy, isn't it? All shiny and black. Um, but I can't plug it in because the plugs here are different. So I'll get a converter and then we can look at it. The specifications, oh, it has 42 UV LED beads, which are the lights. So it can be used for UV products and LED products. It's a combi lamp, which is great because you don't have to worry about needing a different lamp for the different products you use. UV tends to take longer to cure. UV products will take maybe two minutes, whereas LED can take anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute. So it's the Elio or Elio, Elio Pro UV lamp. And they've also sent me their October collection. Don't forget you can use code MISSJO30 for a whopping 30% off your orders at Madame Glam. And they also sent me I know, I'm a very lucky girl. They've sent me some gorgeous little minis and their new brushes. I think all bar one we use in the video today and I'm really pleased with them. I love, the, the, I like them, I like them a lot. <laughs> There's some of them that I didn't know I needed a brush like that and it's just gonna come in so handy for a bunch of things. Um, so we're going to look at the colors. I'm not gonna try and describe colors to you. I'm going to swatch them off camera because I suspected this would be a long video so but I will show you them swatched and we do use this collection in today's video. This is the Boston Gel Party collection which can be found under the new arrivals section on the website. You can get to the website through the link in the description of this video it's an affiliate link so they know that you've come from me and then you can use the code MISSJO30 for 30% off. Uh, this colour, oh, I love this colour, cream donut. This is what we're going to use as our base um, colour today. Oh, true fire brick red is amazing. I've just noticed that there's too big a gap between the word brick and red and the D from the red was not on the screen and I don't know how to fix it because this part of the video has already been saved and it's a semi-transparent label for the fonts. I, it's just going to have to stay like that. It's fine. Bubbles Troubles is super cute. I think minis are really great for if you just do your own nails because they're smaller obviously they're mini then they're cheaper 
they're like half the price. Or if you're a VIP member, they're like four ninety eight in dollars. Um, so you can justify having loads and loads of colours, but not spending loads and loads of money. So this is the J -j 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 Boston Gel Party collection. I feel really calm looking at that collection. It makes me feel calm and cosy, which is perfect for this time of year. And then these are the minis that they've sent me. So there's a whole section for minis on the website as well. So if you only do your own nails, don't worry about buying full-size bottles that might take you ages to get through. Just get double the amount of minis. There you go. So these brushes, we're going to have a quick look at and then we will get going with our design for today. I've tried now four times to describe uses for each of these brushes as I show them on screen but it's I just end up still talking about the first brush by the time I get to the last brush. So I'm just going to show them to you and then we'll see them in use throughout the video. So that was the flat plate brush and this is the striping brush and now I'm running behind. Now we have a dotting tool the tiny little dotting tool, I love this. The one I currently have came from a set of, I think there was about 15 brushes in this set from eBay. All the brushes were crap apart from the dotting tool, but now you don't have to buy 15 crappy brushes for one tiny dotting tool because they have one. And then the silicon tool, which is great for rubbing on uh, foils or pigments or chromes, and it's smaller than the silicon nail tools that are out there so it, it it's better because nails aren't as big as the silicon tool heads um that i've seen around uh this one i did not look at the name oh the petal brush so good for doing petals but also other things i mean you can use them for whatever works for you um but there are some things that they're sort of intended for so we're going to start calm down okay are you ready? It's a 37 minute video. So we've got another 30 minutes together, I'm afraid. To prepare my brush, I have wet my lint wipe, or lint free wipe with isopropyl alcohol. I'm going to squeeze the brush in it and give it a twist and then just lightly, not with a lot of pressure, do little circles and then twist and roll it um, just to soften up the bristles because when it comes, they do need um, softening. And then it's good to go. Hello, my sweets. You okay, Dexter Doggo? He's fine. So we've done cream donut as the base. And then I'm taking one of the browns, which I can't remember what it's called, but it's from that October collection. And the orangey one is Glam Volcano, which is also a Madame Glam polish. And this is the flat plate brush. So I've dipped it in some isopropyl alcohol and I'm just tapping. I have blotted a tiny bit. I haven't touched the brush to my lint-free wipe, but I've got it close enough that the water kind of just attracts itself to the lint wipe. So it takes off just a bit of the excess. And then with the same brush, so, so what I did there was just disperse the gel polish and then it kind of blended together. I'm going for kind of oldy parchment paper stuffs. And then I put some more uh, of the wet brush in the middle of the nail just because it had all started to come a bit too far in so that kind of dispersed it back out towards the edges and it pulls a little bit around the edges which I think just adds to the effect and now we're using the same brush to paint a candle this is this color is oh oh this is check yourself so I've done a straight line done it a bit taller you can see at the top on one side and then just kind of a wiggly patch along the bottom. And this is going to be our black flame candle. And I noticed that it has some detail on. So I'm using Stronger Together from that collection. I'm just going to do a little star, a little moon, a triangle for some reason, some thin lines. There was a whole bunch of detail on it, like a full, full tarot card and that, but I'm not painting that that small. So we're just going to do little details and some of them are going to get covered up anyway with the next bit. So adding some lines, cure it. And then we're taking, am I going too fast? I'm really sorry. And then we're taking cream donut again. 
which is what we've used as our background colour. And we're just going to do some messy drips, like candle wax drips, and a little sort of pool of it down the bottom. I, I've not drawn a melty candle before, so we're just making this shit up. I was watching the new Hocus Pocus film whilst doing this. So I'm joining up one of the drips down to that bottom part so it looks like it's the same thing that's kind of pulled at the bottom. And then with Stronger Together, the colour, we're going to just outline the drips a bit because I think they sort of weren't as defined as I'd like to. So just some really thin lines, just outlining and then give a little sort of bit of movement to it by adding some little curves where the drips start and then outlining that top bit there and we'll give it a little wick with a little straight line and then I'm going to flash cure that just for 10 seconds and do a little S on one side and then a C on the other fill it in and this is with perfect black I think I bring the top of it up a bit more curly the point and then cure that as well that will need a full cure because we're going to put something on top of it we're going to oh in a minute oh yeah I don't really know what I was doing here but I've taken some of this gray that is from that collection put it there and then I'm taking some isopropyl alcohol again and just dispersing it to kind of look like a gray glow but I got a bit carried away and this whole thing kind of just disappears because I, I watered it down a bit too much. Um, I should have stopped there. Stop it. But I didn't. I carried on. I should have left it as a more sort of obvious circle. But it's just to look like it's glowing black. And then I'm going to add a tiny little line using the cream donut to the flame just to, I don't know, make it look shiny. I don't know, a flame shiny? Not really. And then I'm topping everything with a matte top coat. And then I'm going to go over the flame and the candle with the Madame Glam No Wipe top coat. Oh yes, I've made the top of the flame a little bit more wiggly. This brush is so good for this sort of thing, filling in small areas. Because you wouldn't use a bottle brush for this, it's far too big. But if you had a thin striper brush... It just kind of takes ages, doesn't it? Which I always find myself doing because the bottle brush is too thick. But this one gets a lot done whilst also being small enough to stay in little areas. I've added some stars and dots, which I do show you um, later on in the video. But this wasn't the first nail I did. So I thought, don't need to show you. You've already seen it. But I've messed up the order. I'm now taking... <laughs> Oh, it's another talky talky one, but there's a lot going on. And uh, if you don't want to hear about it, then watch him mute. I won't mind. So I'm taking their brown gel paint. Bloody love their gel paints. They're brilliant. I love them. And we're going to write Hocus Pocus. I don't like trying to paint things that have to look like something that exists, but like have to look exactly like it because if you don't then it just I feel it looks rubbish but I think this kind of looked okay so I've just broken it down into little steps and it's a serif font meaning it's got these little bits um, whereas sans serif without serif are ones that don't have those bits so I'm just trying to copy a picture of the um, the film title um, the font that they have so the C was like a little moon with a little pointy bit and breaking it down bit by bit does help instead of looking at the whole thing. I did this several times and each time I had to get smaller because I couldn't fit the word on. Um, so start as small as you can with this <laughs> because however small I thought I was going, I kept needing to go smaller to show all the letters so this was maybe attempt number five of just getting smaller each time. The S has little serifs on each end. So again, breaking that down. Any areas where the letter is thicker, then you want to apply more pressure with the brush and you'll get a thicker line. And then the serifs. So I just did a straight line across and then curved 
that straight line into the vertical line just curved it up and that gave me the little serif and then it had a little wiggly bit going through the h i'm so rubbish at trying to be helpful with writing letters look at a picture break it down into steps um, flash cure as you go if you want to although i didn't because i was worried that if i didn't have room for a letter i couldn't wipe off and then start again um, if you flash cured something in place and the ocus for the pocus was the same as the hocus <laughs> so the p i need to create the shape of the d in the p <laughs> um because the p the shape inside the p is a little d so we need to get in there and fix the shape of the 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 p hole <laughs> I'm such a child. It's not so much that pee hole is funny. It gets kind of funny. <laughs> it's more that it wasn't a word I expected to come up in a nail video. Oh, how wonderful for us all. Um, the good thing about pee holes, <laughs> the good thing about gel paint for lettering is that it doesn't move. I used to only use like gel polish, but I didn't think I needed gel paint. But now I have all the Madame Glam gel paints. They are so much nicer for small details that gel polish, which is somehow, I'm sure, thicker, but also runnier at the same time. Heavier, maybe. I think it's heavier. So if you're painting, for example, um, a pee hole, <laughs> if you were using gel polish, then you're Pee hole would close up. <laughs> Whereas it's not going to with gel paint. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is brilliant. Um, and now we've done some little stars with the brown gel paint as well. Our pee hole didn't close up. <laughs> right. Stop it. I've drawn. Forget the background of this. This was the first nail I did. The first thing of this set I did. And I completely fix the background. It's a bit too scritchy scratchy for my liking. So um, looking. So we do, I change that after I've done the book. So just pretend it's not there. Um, so now we're going to paint the spell book. I've drawn a square at an angle. And then on the right side and the bottom, I've done... Um, an extra line outside of the square that's going to be our pages so we're using optimistic and this brush oh it's so good see i can get a nice straight line and fill it in quickly wouldn't want to use a bottle brush too big but if i was using a really thin striping brush it would take ages to spread this product out and this worked like a dream this brush is my favorite from their new brushes i think it's going to come in super handy oh and the, the the flat played one and the petal one a bit they're all i just like them all um but this one's brilliant for this sort of thing filling in small areas perfect size so now i'm adding brave heart which is the brown the name of the brown that we used at the beginning to do the burnt sort of parchment look again ignore what's going on behind the book just ignore it please um, and we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol just to disperse this out and give it a kind of, I don't know, old, tatty, leathery look. There's no rhyme or reason to this. Just splat some on and spread it out. Um, <laughs> Pee hole. Um, I'm going to do that on both nails. And now I'm taking the do, 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 cream donut which is spelt differently over here. Ours is much frillier. It's D-O-U-G-H. Anyway, I'm going to, this is, so these are the pages of the book. So just an extra line along the side of this square. I've spread the book out onto two nails because we're going to do a 3D eye um, and we can just get more, we can get more detail on by spreading it over two nails. So that's what we have so far. 
While that's curing, let's get to today's sponsor, which is Julia, who have sponsored videos before. And I'm so glad to have them sponsor another video because I just adore their pieces. I already have that ring um, from them and I took an earring out because I had it on. Um, that's from them too, Little Star Sleepers. They asked me to pick another piece and I found some earrings and I am so obsessed with how cute they are. There's always a gift bag included in case you are gifting your purchase and there's information on their rewards program and the benefits you get with it. So I picked these earrings. They're called Owlet with Stars, of course stars. And oh my, oh my, how, there's a lovely box as well. Um, <laughs> how stinking cute are these? <gasps> They're 925 silver and they've got a really good weight to them. They are just over two centimetres in height. So they're not massive, which I like. I don't want a life-size owl hanging from my earlobe. <laughs> um, and they weigh 6.5 grams. And look at the little stars on their wings. Or would you just stop with how perfect these are? I've already based an entire outfit on them. <laughs> Jeans, my navy woolly jumper that has a tan star in the middle, and burgundy converse. I mean... They look lovely in a fancier outfit, but I have no immediate plans that involve a dress and or heels and doesn't have me in pyjamas by 10pm. These make me feel all cosy and mystical and I love it. You can get 15% off your orders with code MISSJO15. I think there is the O is a zero and you can get to Julia's website through the link in the description where I'll also add details of these little owlets. So cute! And I'll add details of the ring and the little star sleepers too. So I highly recommend going and checking out their website. They've got so many unique and funky pieces that I've not seen anywhere else. They've got some serious bling as well. And Christmas is coming up. So go and look at what you want or what you want to buy people, but mainly what you want and share the code with your loved ones. <laughs> Thank you for sponsoring this video. I love them. Off they fly. Back to some nail stuff. We are taking Boston is Calling. Oh, and I forgot to press record because I'm a f***ing genius. And I've added, I tried to sort of copy what the pattern of the stitching was on the book, but it I don't think it matters really. Um, and then we're taking the brown gel paint again and just doing some little stitches across all those lines. I'm kind of making them a little bit curved, sort of a shallow C shape um, for the stitches and then make sure it's curving in the same way on the other side. So that's that. What do we do next? Are we doing the eye now? Okay, move along. Oh no, we've so we're taking the long fine liner and this is Stronger Together, the um, color. And then we're going to outline the book and we're going to give it some pages as well. So just outlining the brown section and then I'll also outline the outside of that cream section. And then we will do some thin lines for where the pages are, not really worrying about them being um, perfectly spaced or perfectly straight because this book is really f***ing old. And then I curved that bit there, which doesn't really make sense because I should have then curved the bottom right corner of the front cover, but Hey ho. So we're adding some thin lines. I haven't got a lot of product on my brush here because we do want to get a few lines in this gap. And obviously the more product on your brush, then the thicker the line's going to be. Even if you do a light pressure with a lot of product, it's going to be thicker than a light pressure with not a lot of product. And then just join those up at the corners. And then I'll do the same on the other nail for the pages and give it a full cure. Okay, now we're gonna do the eye. I bought this stuff specifically for this. I don't know how to pronounce that brand, but it's a hard or solid, it's solid, but it's not rock solid. You can dent it, but it's the weirdest, it's like a modeling gel, I guess, 3D gel, I don't, I don't know. Um, but it's non-stick, so it's kind of sticky, but not sticky, but it is a little bit sticky, but it's not, sticky 
Um, so we're going to take a tiny bit out and make a teeny tiny little ball just by rolling it around in our fingers. And then I'm taking the silicone tool, oh, which was so perfect for this. I don't know how I would have done this without this tool. I'm sure there's ways, but this came in really handy for this. So we'll pop it on the nail and then cure it. And now it's hard. And now we're going to do the eyelids. Oh, pondering something. I don't know what. Oh, painting it. Yes, painting it first before doing the eyelids. So we're using the um, cream donut for this because I want it to, I don't want it to be pure white because this eye is super old. So I kind of want it to look a bit um, sickly, which is why we're going to take um, Glam Volcano and Birthday at the Plaza to create a sort of sickly green. This eye has been around for a long time. Um, there's nothing fresh about it. So we're going to do a circle on there with the mixture of those two colours and cure, not worrying about the middle of the circle being filled in because we're going to do a black dot there. So I suppose the less um, product, the better, although it's 3D, so it doesn't matter if it gets tall. And then I mixed in a little bit of black with the green that we'd mixed to do the outline of the um, the, 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 what is the coloured bit called? The iris. And then I've done a black dot on top in the middle and then a little teeny tiny white dot on the black dot using the um, dotting tool. And now we are taking, oh, and I was full curing each of those steps because when you put gel on top of gel, you want to make sure that you're full curing. Um, I'm going to create a little sausage type thing and uh, put that above the eye and then we're just going to faff around with it for ages. You don't need to faff around with it for ages but I did. I wanted it to be coming over the eye but not fully sort of pushed against the eye so that I could get underneath it um, when painting. So I'm using this tool just to kind of do an eyelid shape I want to make sure it doesn't go over the pages and I also want to make sure it doesn't go over the stitching above the eye so I I did want it this is why I added an extra bit here I did want it to go oh how am I going to describe this um to blend better to the book by coming at an angle sort of from the book up to the high point of the eyelid above the eye. Is this helpful? Sometimes you guys say that I explain things really well and I am 100% sure that I make such a pig's ear out of describing things, but some of you say it helps, so I'll, I'll carry on. Yeah, I wanted it to be more of an angle from the top of the high point of the eyelid going back to the book so it blended but because I didn't want to cover that stitching above it it kind of just sort of sticks straight out as opposed to merging in with the book um, but I think that's okay um, this is so small it's not something anybody's going to have any beef with and if they do tell them to mind their own goddamn business not that I imagine anyone is going to be close enough to point anything like that out and if they are, move away. Give me my space. So on the bottom one, we are doing the same thing. And I have cured the top one. Um, I'm doing the same thing. And I'm, again, trying to make there sort of be definition between the eyelid and the eyeball so that I can get in and paint around the eyeball on the inside of the eye lid yes so I faffed around with this for quite some time and then cured see what I mean it should be angled the top eyelid especially should come more thicker at the back to blend in with the book but then we were going to cover up the stitching and I didn't want to do that so I'm taking the flat plaid brush and I'm going to match the outside of the eyelid and the rim of the eyelid to the book so starting with um 
the brown. Yeah, instead of starting with the same colour I started the book with, I just went straight over with the brown and then we'll add some patches of darker brown and the lighter colour. So I've cured the uh, colour we've done so far and then um, I'm patting on some of the lighter colour and the darker colour and then we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol just to kind of disperse it a little bit just to match it up to the book you can buy colored versions of this gel putty looking stuff I'll put a link for it in the description it's a huge pot um but I figured clear means that I can make it whatever color I want and it will be the same as matching a color on the nail if you've got white and painted it to match something that was already on the nail unless you put white under that color on the nail then it might be a bit different so I've mixed the stronger together and the true fire brick red to create a dark blood sort of brownie blood color and we're going inside the hole and um, sort of lining the waterline of the eye with that red as well so it looks a bit bloodshot and tired and just old as time he's fed up he doesn't want to do the all-powerful spell don't make him do it so that is the eye of the book and now oh we're going to use this beautiful silver chrome gel paint which i love so much it's like magic um Oh, I thought this might be satisfying to look at. Shall we enjoy this together? Boop. Okay. And I'm going to do a strip along the side here because this is where there is a sort of chromey looking snake along the side. And we're going to do the snake in 3D with that stuffs. Oh, did you hear Dexter? Oh, what's up, my love? He's fine. He's put himself into his bed. Um, so um, this bit here, we, they do have, she has little snakes in the corner of the book here that are twisted and pointing. Up. That's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen to make little 3D snakes there. So we're just going to give them little corner um, framey bits. And then we're going to take this stuff. What was it called? I think they called it building gel, but I think that's just confusing. And I'm making a long sausage, a long thin, no, a wiggly worm. And a snake makes more sense. We're going to do a snake. And I'm going to lay it on the cured chrome strip that we've done. So I did cure that. Take off the end and just neaten that end up. And then to make the snake, this tool is so good for this stuff because it sticks to it, but it doesn't stick to it. You can lay it down with it but it moves it and shapes it without sticking to it. It's perfect. So I'm going to push in a bit from the left, in a bit from the right, left, right, left, right, to give us a wiggle and then sort of try and curve those out so it's more of a wiggle than a zigzag. And then we're going to put a tiny little dot on the end. So there's our little wiggly bit. Yeah, it's kind of embossed on the book, isn't it? So we'll put a tiny dot on the end have I cured that? I think I probably did. And we're going to make it into a little sort of diamond snake head shape. And the reason I've, because I'm going to chrome over this. So the reason I've done the chrome strip underneath first, for two reasons. One, because it'll be hard to draw a straight line around this wiggly snake um, and then paint it or like paint a straight line around it with the chrome stuff. But also it's going to give a bit more sort of depth I guess when we're doing this step so there'll be darker bits around the snake um, for kind of black and silver what's that look is it called black and silver yeah look so we cured that and then we're going over it with the chrome again and then we'll cure that I did try to put tiny little dots for eyes with the dotting tool in the snake but the head of that snake is so small that even the tip of the the pointy end of a cuticle stick poking a dot in with that was like the whole of that snake head size so we just left it plain and then we're adding the other silver details she has something in I say she just um, whoever owns the book that she oh she doesn't own it anymore does she anyway um it goes round here 
it's not you know a perfectly scaled drawing of the book but I think it's you know it's got all the important bits so it does have um, silver around the eye and then I wanted them to meet up but they didn't so I'm just doing the little clasp that goes over the pages yes and those corners of the book there it was just a sort of L in each corner and then I curved the tip between the tips between the ends of each L to kind of make them a little curved kind of bracket looking thing and then we're going to go over with no wipe top coat and then I will fix the background I do that off camera because I should have you know if I was doing this again I would just do it how I did the background I showed you at the beginning first um, so it will look a little bit different when we have a look at this when it's done so we're going to top the whole book in shiny I did do this nail already so this is the second one I've done oh I'm using a detail brush for this bit because you don't want to put too much product in or around the eye you don't want it thick because you'll lose the um, definition and the high and low points so yeah the background doesn't look that great now but it's a it's a bit better so that is our book I think the snake I love the snake bit I think it looks so cool and then our eyeball which we'll have a close look at so this is my second attempt at this didn't plan on doing it twice but then when I got the Madame Glam colors I thought oh it'll, it'll be nicer done with those and I can do it using all the things I learnt what not to do from the first one and you'll see how rubbish the first one looks because I think I'm going to show you here is the first one so my snake I just wasn't being um faffy enough it's just kind of a, a sort of wiggly line and I thought the second time I'd do it bigger but it turns out I did it smaller which I didn't realize until holding them up there so that's kind of the difference between doing something once and then doing it again just the things you learn from the first one and with the first one I topped I topped it matte and then thought oh no shiny then thought oh no matte and then thought oh no shiny so the eye lost all definition um between the eyelid and the eyeball but yeah so that's the difference between a first and a second attempt and now the last nail we are going to do some big stars and we've got to get a big chrome star on there and I wanted that front and centre so we'll start with that and then I'm going to do a star with the brown gel paint because I want to tie in all the colours from the other nails the br brown gel paint the glam volcano um, oh and here I'm just I've done my star and I'm just pulling out towards the point just to get it a bit more pointier a bit pointier more pointy and then we'll add the other stars and then we're going to do little stars so that top one is brown gel paint the bottom one is glam volcano and then we're doing little stars in stronger together which is kind of like a, a blacky brown which we've used for the outline on here and some little dots dot stars yay found a way to get dots and stars into another set but I think it does kind of give it a kind of I don't know like I imagine this is what sort of floats above a cauldron you know just little magic happening in the air and I'm going to top over the chrome which does need topping and then I'll top over the, the brown gel paint doesn't need topping but I think I, I go over it anyway because I'm going over the um, bottom one which is a gel polish if you wanted just the chrome one to be shiny that would be cool so you could do everything apart from that star then matte top and then shiny the chrome one. Oh, that would have looked cool Joseph oh well um, but I've just left it um, the little the little stars I should have done before matte topping um, otherwise you'd have to shiny top them and that's that oh my goodness I haven't shut the f up and I hope I made some kind of sense and that if you're going to recreate this, it's been a little bit helpful, maybe. Um, let me know in the comments which part of this set is your favourite. I think mine's got to be the snake and then the eye. I like the candle. I kind of like all of it, which, you know, I can find ways to pick at everything. But sometimes you just have to be nice to yourself and say, yes, it looks okay. 
So don't forget you can use code MISSJO30 and the link in the description for money off your orders. I appreciate you being here. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.